Welcome to my video series, The Heroine's Journey. It's time to find your happiness. This video is called Anatomy of Leap. So we're gonna talk about all the different parts of a leap and a leap being a response to the call that you've received. When you were in your comfort zone, you got some sort of a nudge or a push or you blundered perhaps into responding and now you've crossed the threshold or you're crossing it and going on a journey into the unknown. So we're going to talk about what are the parts? How can you break that down into parts? Because it does have parts. And I want you to remember a couple of things. One is that all the leaps we take, whether they be big or little, all contribute to growing us, evolving us into the amazing heroines that we are. And you'll remember, if you listen to the previous uh, video about how we categorized our leaps and remembered past leaps and it's something that we tend to forget. So I am here to remind you that you have taken leaps before in your past and they all again have contributed to you being the amazing being that you are. The other thing to remember is that you can develop your leaping muscle so that when it's time to take a leap, when you see an opportunity or something happens to you that you have to respond to and will cause a big jolt, like a chasm will appear that you have to leap over, then um, if you've been taking small little leaps and exercising that muscle, it can help. And so what that looks like is doing things you haven't done before. And it just could be trying them out, just taking a little step. So take one workshop on how to paint with watercolors or one dance class or sign up for French 101 like I did last Christmas and do something that where you, that what's important is you're in there feeling odd, feeling uncomfortable because you're trying something new. So you get used to that feeling. You're supposed to feel that way when you try something new, when you stretch yourself. So it's a good way to feel where often people say, oh, I don't want to do that. I'm going to feel so weird because everyone's going to know I'm new. Well, yeah, and that's how you learn new things is you go through that feeling and keep trying. So remember that you can exercise that muscle. You don't have to wait for something to happen or to a big choice that you have to make. Just do it ordinarily anyway. So let's look at this anatomy thing. What are the parts of a leap? So if we really bake it down into all its pieces, well, part of it is you're in the comfort zone before you leap. So it's kind of where you are before you begin. And what's that like for you, maybe, the comfort zone? So it's you haven't taken action yet. You're just hanging out where you're used to hanging out. It's ordinary life. It's your routine. It's where you don't feel stretched or challenged. It's just kind of same old, same old. Not that it's bad. It's just where you begin, where you are. It's when you're playing this on the candy land or any game board, it's the first square where you start out. And then you get a call. And we have talked about this. This is an invitation to do something, to leave that comfort zone. And it can come to you in many ways. For everybody, it's different. It can come as a big bonk on the head. Boy, I have to do, I have to do this. I have to leave my job. 
some big kind of aha in your life. Or it can be a little voice, a little nudge. This isn't really working for you, is it? I think maybe this is something I don't want to do. But then you kind of put it aside, but then it comes back the next day. This really doesn't feel right anymore. So, so many different ways a call can come to you, but it's your invitation to leave your comfort zone. So the call we've talked about also in just the previous video that how you respond to it, it can be a opportunity that you grab, that you go for, or it can be a blunder, something that just kind of happens as a result of you doing something and that it's sort of not what you intended, but it turns out to be just exactly what you needed, sort of the blunder turns into a blessing, or it can be something happens to you that knocks you out of your comfort zone. It's nothing that you asked for. Well, you didn't intentionally ask for it, but sometimes your thoughts inside, we talked about this, being careful what you wish for, because it can come to you because let's remember, your thoughts are very powerful. Your thoughts plus your feelings are very powerful. So if you've been ruminating how much you hate your job and thinking thoughts about you want to get out of there and then the next day or soon thereafter, you're fired, maybe that's not so much of a surprise. Then the next, of course, and we've talked about this, you can ignore your call. That's another step you might take. Just stuff it down just refuse it. I was just interviewing this wonderful guest from my podcast, the Real Life Heroines podcast, which won't be airing until the beginning of next year, 2022. But Shirley Hager has just, she's an author, she's written this book that's already sold out in its second printing called The Gathering. And it's a story of several indigenous people in Maine and how for five years they gathered together to talk about issues of their commonality, what keeps them apart, just everything that's important to them in a circle they met and kind of in the, the way that indigenous people used to meet and talk through things. And she told me, that she had a remarkable refusal of the call. She was so, she was a facilitator in the process and she was so taken by it and what happened there that she wanted somebody to write about it. And she worked hard to get people to take up the pen and write about that experience that it was something like 14 people had together. And Nobody would take it. She finally thought she found somebody who would, would take it. In fact, that person said, yes, I will write it. And I will write it in a half a year's time and we'll get it done. And they did a lot of prep work and the woman lived in Australia and she went back to do something and something happened and she had to have an eye operation and she wasn't able to do it. And Shirley said, you know, Susanna, I knew from day one, as I think back that I was the person meant to write that book. And I did everything I could to refuse it. And finally, even after that last ditch effort, effort to give it to somebody, she realized this is mine to do. And she did. And it's been a great success, but that's a potential piece of the anatomy that you can refuse it. And there's also that piece where you can refuse the action. You can go back to your comfort zone. You are control in control of your fate. You can say, no, I don't think this is the right thing for me. So I was just being interviewed 
for a book that Joe Swinger is writing called Escape the Corporate Jail, Breaking Out of the Corporate Jail. And it's about people who have left corporations, a paycheck, benefits, all the things that represent security and have gone out on their own, which is something that I did. And we were talking about it and he said, you would not believe the statistic of how many people leave and then eventually come back. They wanna be back under the safety net, in the safety net. And that actually happened to the person, the woman who left with me. Um, we had been out for a while and then we decided not to be together. Well, actually, that was a surprise for me on my road of adventure when she didn't want to, said she didn't want to be my partner anymore. But then eventually she went back to the big manufacturing company where we both had started out. So it happens. And again, there's no judgment, just wasn't right. Another step then is, all right, we're, I'm answering this call, let's do it. So that can be broken down into, you know you're gonna answer it, you wanna do it, so you have to kind of get ready. What are the things to, if you're gonna respond, what do you have to do to do that response? And part of that, as we know, and we've talked about is gathering your courage. So you can bet that when I decided, yes, I have to leave this marriage, my first marriage, I had to see all the steps, what I had to do, like tell them that I was going to do it. And how was that going to work? So you have to kind of figure out what your steps are to respond. And part of that is the feelings there, getting your courage up, getting the bravery up, well, talking to those threshold guardians who are always there and getting them to take a back seat. So there's a lot to do as you think through how you're going to do it. And something that comes up often, and I think people forget, is that, and this can come up at any time as you are leaping and leaving and even afterwards, is the grief you feel because there will always be loss. You are always leaving something behind, people behind, experiences behind that you won't be able to have anymore because you're not there anymore. And there is a piece there that will affect everybody. Even if it's something that you really, really want, this opportunity and you're jumping to grab it, Maybe you won't even realize until later that, oh, yeah, because I did this, I no longer get to go to wherever or see these people because we've gone our separate ways. And that happens a lot. So loss is a part of it. And some people have a harder time with that than others. But then you're responding, you're leaping, you're taking the action. You haven't reversed it. You haven't refused it. And oh no, you're mid leap. And this, <laughs> this can be really uncomfortable, really challenging. So think of all the metaphors, even the, I'm sure the pictures you've seen of people, there's a lot of them you know, leaving and they're in midair in the leap. And it's the metaphor about you're on the trapeze and you've let go of one and you haven't gotten to your next trapeze. So you're flying through the air. And I often talk about being in the hallway. I like this metaphor that picture a long hallway. On one side is the door that you've been in, the room that you've been in, your comfort zone. You know that room, you love that room, you feel great in that room, it's very cozy, but you're responding, you're not refusing. So you have left that room and you're out in the hallway. You're not even holding onto the doorknob anymore. You are in the hallway, but you haven't 
chosen. You're not landed. You haven't landed yet in one of the rooms on the other side. And there are a lot of potentials there. There are a lot of options, all kinds of doors on the right-hand side, which is why it's also called the zone of power, because there's so much potential of what you could do or where you could go, because you have left what no longer served you, that old room. So there's so much opportunity, but still it feels uncomfortable. William Bridges wrote the book Transitions, which is often used in organizational development, my old field, to describe the stages companies go through when they make big, big changes. And he talks about how the transition part is the emotional part of making the change that people don't really take into account how it's hard for people. And for some people, it's harder than others. Everybody works with change and it's accompanying transitions differently. And he calls this middle part, the neutral zone. And he also says it's a great period of creativity for organizations and for people because so much now is possible because they haven't landed yet in the, their new way of being. So it's an exciting time. You have to be comfortable with ambiguity. You can't really even define yourself clearly when you're at that point, when you're in midair. Who am I? I used to be a this, but I haven't become a this yet. So it's part of the leap, part of the challenging part of the leap. And then there's landing. You're on the road. You know where you're going. You've got your destination, though who knows? You might be like me with that blunder thinking, oh, I'm going to be a facilitator and realizing, oh, no, you need to deal with conflict. You have to be a mediator, too. So things happen on the road of adventure, and we'll talk about that, too. But once you've landed, then it's something that now you got to face what's next. And so my most recent experience with that was my big leap of publishing my book. You publish it, you do what you have to do to get it out there. And then now what? <laughs> so then now what is a big question. But again, it's all part of the journey and part of the process and knowing what the journey is like is so helpful as you navigate yourself along the path. So I'm wondering about you. Are you mid-leap in the zone of power? Are you maybe refusing? Or maybe you've decided I don't know if this is for me. I answered this call and got this job and it doesn't feel right. It's okay to say it didn't work. Or maybe you've just landed. You've done it. And now you've got what you were looking for, this opportunity. And wow, now what? So you could be in any of these places. But you know what I'm really curious about? I'm curious about what finally got you to respond. You know, your motivation. What kind of kicked you in the butt to get you to do it? And of course, everybody has, there's all different kinds of motivation. But I love this quote from Anais Nin. She writes, and the day came when the risk to remain tight as a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. And I've got to think, heroines, that that's often the case, that we can hold in our awesomeness 
our brilliance just so long to please everybody else and to fit in and to do what we think we're supposed to do when eventually it gets so painful to keep that all in and keep it down and stuff it that we just uh, respond to those calls and blossom. So thank you heroines for coming with me on this video. And please always remember, you are a heroine.